So, Mike, hello, hi, hi, hi. So let's talk about, I'm gonna pay this guy. Ba -ba -ba -ba. So I don't have a huge plan for him, but I have a idea for a color palette. So I think I'm gonna work kind of in tones like this. Let's zoom out a little bit. Get this. So kind of in oranges, these sort of colors, right? Somewhere in this orange. And then something like this and uh, these kind of like cobalt blue orange teal sort of sort of color range so that's my only plan this sort of complementary ish browns and, and teals and oranges sort of color scheme Might add a little bit more <coughs> yellow in spots to have a bit of a split uh, somewhere, something in between, but. Let's grab. Thanks, man. Okay. Yeah, I know, right? Hi everyone. And some kind of shadow color just to uh, uh, desaturate a little bit. We'll use like a dark teal. Where is it? Probably won't need very much of this, but just add it to the palette just in case. Just a, just a touch. I don't want that like super red for the base of his skin.
How's everyone? How's everybody doing? Who's getting ready to... Who's waiting to sign up to Nova classes? I'm actually going to have just a bit of the skin tone. I'm going to like paint a little over the, the beard. So when I go back and do the beard, I get a little bit of that skin tone showing through where the transition point is. See, that was too much. You can see how quickly the, the dark teal changes the color. Hi, Monkey Bird. Thanks for following. I'm going to grab a little bit of this darker tone and just use that for these. This whole thing is covered by a shield later, so it can be a bit, a bit darker. Okay. 
very wet. I have not watched Romans. Uh, I watched a little bit of it. No, I'm not going to finish before you do. Right. I, I'm only painting him once a week, so it's going to take me... Uh, a few weeks to finish. Only painting him one day a week. I'll be lucky to finish him before Adepticon. Now, if I was painting him every day, yeah, I'd probably be finished by this weekend, but only a few hours on Wednesdays. All right, so I'm actually going to take some of this darker color and just go ahead and cover the eyebrows. Just so they're not bothering me. It's not two dwarves in a well. There's other stuff I'm painting at the same time. There could be. I painted something. I've painted stuff in between painting the uh, the Hera figure. Maybe it's three dwarves in a row. Who knows? Hard to say. Or I'm not going to say. Is it Polish? Just off Tom. Chistov brought me some some Polish uh, paper. I haven't tried it yet. So these sculpts, like most Spira sculpts, have lots of little micro volumes. I want to basically ignore those micro volumes at first. I want to paint them as if they're not there. And then later, as I get more detail, I'll start to, to introduce some of those smaller volumes. If I paint them too early, it, uh, it'll look like overly wrinkly.
like even the back of the hand here though some of this is going to get covered by the shield so i have to i might have to reintroduce shadows lighter but like basically consider the back of the hand one volume I'm not worried about the little veins and stuff yet. No, Sean, I have not started my Golden Demon piece. See you, Rep. Enjoy your ravioli. Okay. I'll give this part just a little bit of light. I'll probably end up ignoring most of this arm. For now, like I said, he's got a big shield that goes like right there, so. When painting, what are some current painting rules or techniques that you like to adhere to? Style decisions, etc. Um, I mean, I don't really follow any rules per se. Um, hmm. Style decisions slash rules. I mean, I, I would say like I tend to paint and I'm in a bit more stylized approach than some. A more illustrative style than like a realism style, but. Technique wise, I guess I do a lot of sketching. I think sketching's important. Okay, so. All right, do I want to have the light coming from favoring one side. Kind of like it just straight from the front. So I want a good view of both. It, it's very much sculpted to kind of be viewed from the front because the if you turn it this too much this way, the bird kind of loses its silhouette. And then if you turned it too much this way, the shield, you'd lose the shield, so.
think a more just frontal light is going to work well for him. It's important to think about the figure, the, the sculpt also, right? Like, I could get real fancy with the lighting, but sometimes, you know, just a a simple lighting works works well also to help show off the sculpt. Hi, Ollie. I don't, he's not quite squinty. He's got like slightly droopy eye on this side, but he's not like heavily squinting or anything. So now as I get to some of these lighter tones, I'm, I'm getting it more into the lights. Now I can start picking out some of the smaller, the smaller volumes. Still not painting like super refined. I'll go back and refine once I have the general forms in. So like right now, this transition here is not that abrupt. So I need to add a little more light to the side of his face. Okay.
And these are kind of my highlight areas. I might end up going one higher than this. Got a stray hair that wants to come out. There we go. But I'm, I'm pretty close to my highlight value now. I don't want to go... I, I do want to maintain this kind of orangish feeling to the skin. If I go too pale, I'll lose that, that nice saturated value to the skin. And uh, keep that that kind of orange, orange teal look that I'm going for. If I went all the way to white, it would it would lose some of that feeling. If I do use some, it'll only be little tiny dots for like the extreme final lights. Okay. Like that. Dry for a second, and then I can come in and glaze some of the reddish tones back over top. This will help unify some of my sketch and pick out some of those details like a wash basically it's a little heavier than a glaze a little lighter than a wash um, right trying to soften soften my sketch Soften the sketch and yet at the same time pick out pick out some of those details, the wrinkles and such. Okay. Give me one second. Actually, my foot's asleep. I'm not going to be able to walk over it. I'm not trying to trip on camera.
Right. So now I need to rebuild back up my lights. Okay, so some really small volume stuff you can see in like the corner of his nose here. I want to try and pick out that shape, right? That's going to help define the, uh, the corner of his nose and or the nostril. And then on the slight underside of this volume, right? Then I can get that. So it really helps define that shape. Here on the this side of his nose, this is too dark. It's not it's not that much in shadow. Okay, and then connect those. So get that nice dark line right next to that. Look, see this dark line right here of his nostril right next to the bright line of the light that catches in like the corner of his nose. You can see it on me too, right? Like right here. Hey, Grey Knight 700. I'm good. How are you?
Think about doing a Deathwing army of pure Terminators, but I'm not sure how to to weather bone color armor. Um, so bone's an interesting one because bone you can kind of go two ways with it. You can go more like your beiges and things, or you can go a little more khaki. So I actually like to base coat my, when I'm doing bone, I tend to like to base coat with like an olive drab kind of color. Um, it helps, uh, and this thing's running everywhere. Uh, it tends to help separate it from leathers that tend to have more of like a brown undertone to them. So I find an olive drab undertone that works up slightly more warm uh, works a little better than than going with a like pure uh, like browns and oranges, oranges tones all the way across. Need an even more refined brush for this. I need new brushes is what I need. Hi, pun expecting. Does that make sense, Granite? The like. By, by changing the, the shadow color, like the base color, and building up from there, you can help distinguish it from uh, other materials. And, and I'm sure, like, Deathwing and stuff is going to have some leather, some leather on it. Okay, so now that I've got all these little, like, now I'm really, we're trying to work on some of these, like, smaller volumes and just pick out, right, the, the way I really define these is by putting, just like I did with the nose here, which I'll soften a little bit, but by putting the light, like, right next to the shadow of the, the volume, uh, the adjacent volume, really help build up that definition. So like on these wrinkles and things. I also like to try and connect some of the wrinkles with a little bit of light. Or any volume, skin volume for that matter. Um, it helps make the skin feel more cohesive. So like that light I have in the corner of his eye right now is a is a bit too bright. I'm gonna tone that tone that down just a little touch. But I want that shadow like back deep in here. Uh, if you want to do it that way, yeah, you could. Um, I find doing like a white base coat on can be kind of a pain in the ass on gaming minis because you've got to like really go in and try and like clean up all the like paint all the dark lining and stuff on Space Marines. The the like black 
stuff in between the armor plates can be a real pain in the ass. Bobby Hermit, hello. Thanks for following. Might be a little too much red. Didn't they make a new one of him recently? Asriel. Did he get primarist? Okay, so this side's looking pretty okay. Instead of using so much orange for some of these areas in shadow, I'm going to use a little bit more of the like pinkish skin tone to do the hut, to do the lights on on the shadow. Some of these I really cooled. How are you?
I've been working on it for 48 minutes. Well, I appreciate it. All right. Uh, let's see. Now I want to move up in light a little more. I could use an ivory or I could use a color like uh, Sunray, which is even, it's actually pretty white. Um, it's a little more yellow than an ivory. So when I'm mixed with the, uh, the sunny skin tone, it's, it's going to come out just a little bit more yellow than an ivory would. Do you need one more? Little uh, level of light. See that that final. Add that final white to a few spots. This will also help uh, really small dots of this. It's going to help pick out some of these really tiny volumes. Let's see. Uh, am I doing something wrong or orange? Yellow paint requires more layers to cover a surface than brown. Or blue, for example. I'm actually painting pump. Yeah, well, so orange and yellow has is a much weaker pigment. Um... Than, than blue pigments so it's typically easier to uh, base coat in some kind of like uh, or to like paint a neutral gray over and then and then paint the orange back over top of that I'm sure there's some scientific reasoning behind like wavelengths and penetration of pigmentation and all kinds of stuff. But basically, if you want a brighter, more solid uh, yellow, use like a beige or something first, like over over highlight it with like a light beige and then paint the orange back over top of it. So you can see the difference from kind of where we did like the sketch and then glazed over it to a more refined look with some of the wrinkles and everything picked out. Now where I need, I can 
start to reintroduce some of the, the shadows, like the really deep shadows. Got this little part of his nose here. A little volume right here. To kind of help connect this transition so his nose really feels like it's, you know, part of his face and not like a thing that's bolted on, if that makes sense. And you have like a overly defined separation with nothing bridging the two. You can see kind of on this side, like his, his nose feels almost separated from his face. Or over here, because you've got this little connection right here, it helps uh, make it feel like it's all part of his face. Okay. even though that's in shadow, the, the upper eyelid, a lot of these things are in shadow. Just defining them a little bit will help uh, it make the face more readable. Now I'm going to take just a touch of this, more of the pure red. Glaze a little on his nose. Uh, it's cavalry brown. It's very similar to chimera red oxide. Yeah. I'm basically out of red oxide.
Hey, Ricardo, if you're watching, send me some uh, red oxide. He's not watching. So. On the nose here, even though I painted this highlight already, I'm gonna I'm gonna redo just a touch of this with a bit more of the the pinkish mid tone, and then I'm gonna skip some of the orange on the nose. So instead of using um, the orange, I'm gonna skip right to adding some of this sun ray to the the pink mid-tone and I'll reapply the lights it's going to make his it's a subtle difference between this and the uh the rest of the skin but you but you can see it your brain your brain sees it and it's going to make his nose feel a little rosier. Can you all see the subtle difference between the tip of the nose and the rest of the skin? I really wanted I could make that more extreme but I don't think it uh, needs to be a lot I think it's really easy to overdo that kind of effect
this part again, right? That little spot before the, between the beard or the mustache and the nasal fold. I want to define that nasal fold. I like to push, push some lights right into there. Am I? What would make you think that, Alessandra? I live in... I live like 20 minutes from the largest naval base in the entire world. Uh, that was a helicopter, actually. I used to live really close to... Um, so there's two bases, actually. There's the naval base. Well, they're both naval bases, but one of them is where they keep like all the fighter jets. And I used to live really close to that. That's called... Naval Weapons Station Oceana or something like that. I can't remember the exact name. That's where all the fighter jets are. And that used to be really loud. Uh, we don't get too many of the fighter jets flying over head here. I like it. I like the sound of the jets. That's the sound of freedom.
Yes, I live close. I live in Chesapeake, but I'm like ten minutes from Norfolk, and like twenty minutes from the naval base. depending on traffic. Have a good night, too. Not that I ever go to the naval base, but my roommate sure does. Nah, man. I've grown up around the military my whole life. Military, all the kids I went to school with were military Navy brats. Things are a lot like... A lot less interesting when you live around them all the time. That's like people, I also live near the beach, and people are like, oh, you go to the, you must go to the beach all the time. Like, no, I hate the beach. I don't want to go to the beach. I'm a Judy. What? English lesson time? What am I giving an English lesson on? What did I say? I said someone's name that I just am guessing the pronunciation on. Majudi? I don't know how you... I have no idea what that is. I may... I, I don't know. I don't know what I said.
Maybe I said Navy brat. You know what a brat is, right? I'm not a Navy brat, but all my friends were. A brat is a term for like It's a derogatory term for a child. Brat. Like the dolls. Brats. I don't know, man, you gotta ask him what that means. I don't try and figure out people's names on Twitch. No, most of them don't make any sense to me. All right, we're gonna give him a cash shadow. We're gonna do that. I think we can do that, huh? Give him a small one from his, from his helmet. There goes another helicopter. Can you hear it? I mean, it's nonsense. It's gibberish. You know that word? Polish well, probably does have one of the hardest pronunciations of any language. They gotta know, right?
Jistov told me a Polish tongue twister while we were at, uh, while we were at Monty, and it, I swear he just went, zh, 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 zh. and I was like, I don't, <laughs> what? <laughs> Hey, Sauce, thanks for the prime, dude. Appreciate it. Let's zoom out a little bit. We've been looking at them all up close. Let's take a let's take a step back. It's good to evaluate from a distance, right? So, what do we think of it so far? I think from a distance that the face could feel a little more rounded. Okay, how are we going to do that? I'm going to move some mid-tone back on the side of the face. We need to round some of these outer volumes a little bit. Push the light a little more towards the middle. In beetle buzzes in a cane. <laughs> that's that's the tongue twister. That is nonsense. There's one in Spanish about sad tigers. It's like tres triste tri, ti, tres, tres triste tigres, something or other. It's it goes on from there. Okay, so you can kind of see how it rounded out the face a little bit.
I'm try. I'm just trying to read that and and like pronounce it in my head. Trentatre, Trentini, intrarono a Trento, tutti i trentatre, trotare Londo. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how close that was. Probably terrible. Sally sells seashells by the seashore. Peter Piper picked a pack of pickled peppers. How many packs of pickled peppers did Peter Piper pick? Made one ordering a Swiss roll on. Spatzel special with a side of schnitzel. That's not that bad. That one's not that hard. Dude, uh, Shuskon Shun Gande Shusko Scoter Score Scote Shustio Show Cho Skujka Shojman Bad Skip Bet Shanghai. I don't know. I told you guys, my, uh, Swedish lineage ended, the language learning part of it ended a while ago. I've never claimed to be Swedish. I'm I am American.
Brisk Brave, Brigadiers, Brandish, Broad, Bright, Blades, Blunderbusses, and Bludgeons, balancing them badly. Nailed it. Got any more English ones? I can do those. And maybe some Spanish ones. If you must cross a course, cross crow. Oh, okay. This one is actually tough. If you must cross a course, cross cow across a crowded cow crossing. Cross the cross course cow across the crowded cow crossing carefully. Yeah, that one's tough. Mainly because the sentence itself doesn't like make any sense. What is a course cross cow? Is he crossed with someone? He's upset about something? Because that the second part of it didn't seem as tough. It was just that first part where I'm like, wait, a cow? <laughs> okay now I think probably the smart thing to do would be to base coat the beard so I can get the volume of the beard and the face together um, first I'm going to let my leg stop being asleep oh is, uh, is now time for uh, is what's it called? Nova classes go live? Everybody's going to do that. Six sick hicks, nick six slick bricks with a picks and sticks. Ah, oh, go ahead live at 8.30. Okay. Six, six, hick, snick, six, hick, slick bricks, and a picks and sticks. With picks and sticks. Got it. All right. So, let's base coat the hair. I pulled the color side, but I don't know where it went. Oh, here we go. We'll just use uh, this. It's like an orangish. I wish to wish the wish you wish to wish, but if you wish the wish, the witch's wish is the w oh, okay. I'll try one more time. I wish to wish the wish you wish to wish, but if you wish the wish, the witch wishes. I won't wish the wish you wish you to wish. Okay. How about buffalo, 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 buffalo. I believe is a grammatically correct English sentence.
three sweetest three Swedish switch witches watch three Swiss wa swatch watch switches which sweetest switch which watch which Swiss <laughs> swatch watch switch that one's hard That's a good one. Hey, you know, uh, I gotta slow me down. Can you can a canned can into an uncanned can like a canner can can a canned can into an uncanned can? I had one slight delay in that, but I think I did pretty good. The people watching this later are going to be like, what the heck is he talking about? Because they can't see the chat. And... So for anyone watching on YouTube, Chad is just giving me a whole bunch of tongue twisters to try and read. Hi, Dan. Okay, I'm going to grab just a little of this. I want to take just a bit of this green because I don't want his hair to really be orange. So I'm going to desaturate. I mean, it's going to have a bit of an orange undertone to it, but it is going to be a bit more blonde. So I'm going to add just a touch of the green in the shadows, like underneath, to desaturate a little bit.
Uh, I think you'd be better off going for class tickets first. I don't think you're typically going to have too much trouble with a hotel. It's a pretty big hotel. Like, they, they went larger this year. But, hey, that's just my advice. Okay, now just a little bit of this, and then a lot of this. Start to create some of the volume of his, his beard. I'm not painting individual strands of hair yet. I'm just painting the larger volume of the hair. Um, But I'm still painting in the direction that the hair grows, so when I paint layers on top of this, some of these brush strokes can show through and create the, uh, the texture that I'm looking for. Uh, I don't, I haven't checked. If I did, like, within the last, you know, hour or so, I've been streaming and I haven't really looked at my phone. Or within the last two hours. But I will check right after the stream. Would have been this morning. Oh, okay. Well, I need to, I need to look then. Okay. Right. So, build up that. Now we can go. Straight to this tone. I don't even remember what it was called. Parasite brown or something. It's, it's a yellowish brown, but still got a bit of a little bit of orange in it. Now I'm gonna now I'm gonna start to be a little more refined with the volumes, trying to pick out some individual hair strands. Me too, man. I'm excited for Nova and uh, 
Adepticon also, though Adepticon is coming up very fast, a little too fast. Well, maybe don't enter a gigantic bust this year. That might that might help you uh, finish in time. Are you trying to get a rule made for you? Gonna call it the pun expected rule. I'm gonna put size limitations. What's his name? Uh, another guy basically got the uh, the diorama rule, where he entered a diorama that was like an entire display board for his army. And they were like, yeah, we don't know where to put this, like, three foot by three foot board. That now was actually smaller than what I was expecting. If you want the real reason pun is, is because they have to put it somewhere and keep it safe overnight. And if it's like gigantic, it's hard for them to find storage for it. The one fit in the, the one case, luckily. So this is a thing I see people do a lot. Uh, I'm going to try and show here. So I see this a lot on people's figures where like the transition line from like the beard to the skin is like really pronounced. It's like often got almost like a shadow line. If you look on my face, like you can't, there's not a shadow line, right? It's just light 
of the beard. So, um, you can see right here that like the brush strokes is just transitioning like right into the light value of, of the beard, right? You don't need a dark shadow line right there. Oh, sorry. Let me get on camera so you can see what I'm doing. Alright. Alright, so the brush strokes go in the direction um, that the hair grows. But notice I'm also not painting like perfectly parallel brush strokes. I'm crossing over occasionally. Don't want them to be all exactly in line with each other or that will look unnatural too. So I create a sort of zigzag pattern. Bobby Long, thanks for following. Hello, welcome. And as I get further away from the center where I have more light, I'm going to space them out a little more. So the texture gets more spaced out and it basically is like creating a gradient using more spaced out brush strokes. Essentially I'm hashing, I'm literally doing hashing, but with, you know, longer brush strokes. And then here on the beard, I have to paint in these curves, right? So curves, but also crossing over a little bit. And then the most amount of light you can see from where the wet paint is, right? That's where the brightest, the brightest highlight's going to be. Not directly on top, but slightly more forward.
So one big cone that goes all the way across to the lights, other than this part of the beard and the mustache, the most amount of light in the center, and then it fades out as it moves backwards. And then I also uh, want to just emphasize that flare at the bottom just a little bit. Yeah, you basically have two different kinds of lights, right? You've got diffuse lighting and specular lighting. And specular are like more like reflections, and depending on how reflective a material is, uh, you'll get sharper specular highlights, uh, where non-metallic is basically all specular highlight. It's just reflections. But hair is typically a bit, you know, oily. It's a little shiny. It's not, uh, it depends. So like animal fur, I often will paint a little less specular, but like if I'm painting a lady's hair, it'll be a little shinier. But this guy's beard looks pretty groomed, so maybe his hair is a little, his beard's a little shinier than I might typically paint uh, like a dwarf's beard. But he comes across well manicured. Does have a little bit of that vibe. Man, my phone is buzzing like crazy. Is this all people talking about Nova classes? Is that what's going on? This is it just Discord going nuts?
All right, that's fine. Which class? Class classes. Cash out, okay. All right, how's this, how's this beard looking so far? We, we, it's getting there, I think. It's starting to develop some, some texture to it, some shape to it. We're gonna add a little more light around, around the top of the beard near the face. So we get this nice transition, nice subtle. Transition from the hair to the skin. So some of this might be a little too bright. So I can actually take just a little bit of the skin tone and mix that in. If I want to make it even more subtle, the right, something like that. Down to six spots. Okay. Dang. 15 minutes down to six spots. Well, that's the thing about cast shadows. The better you do them, the less noticeable they are. Because you want them to trick the viewer into thinking that they're, you know, natural shadows so you, you kind of just go all right yeah that makes sense painting illusion they're illusions I'm excited, uh, Teal, Tebow, Tebow Ron is coming this year. I think it's going to be, uh, cool. That class always sells out. OSL is like, I don't know what it is about OSL. I will continue to teach it because it is always like the first one to sell out. All right, man. He is looking dapper right now with his... This big old mustache and beard. Right, so we're gonna push just a little light and texture onto the top of the mustache. And then here, where they two kinda, I'm gonna have a little hair like crossover like that. Mm. 
right, but I don't want too much because I don't want too much shadow here. Because I want it to look like it's sort of not stuck on his face, but like growing out of his growing out of his face. I don't want our dwarf to have a, a glued on beard. Now I'm going to grab just a little bit of the sunny skin tone, a little bit of the sun ray, and some of this. I'm using the same colors I used in the skin, but because I changed the mid-tone, it's going to change the feeling, the, the tonality of the entire thing. But I'm using the same tones for the light, so the light will feel harmonious. It doesn't just have to be your skin tone. It could be any color you use for the light. Like, you could use sunny skin tone to highlight pretty much anything. It's a very neutral color. So it tends to not affect the, the uh, hue very much. Just warm it up a little bit. Hello, Leaf Storm 420. Thanks for following. All right. Hey. A little less light down here, but a little more light up here where the beard's thinner, right? We've got more strands of hair growing out further down the, the face, so a bit lighter hairs that catch, catch a little more reflections towards the top. then the hair becomes thicker, is it? Or more dense, I guess, not necessarily thicker hair, but you get what I mean.
Okay. And then if I have to, I can go. Nice. Thanks for everyone who signed with the class. Excited to see you there. Any class. and excited to judge your models. Oh, I'm gonna judge you so much. You wanna know who's gonna be my, my co-judge for masters this year? Mr. Chistoff. He's judged a couple little shows like, you know, Contrast, Monte Sansovino, World Model Expo. He's got a little experience in judging. I believe he also judged the Kingdom Death pinup contest with Trent. I'm going to judge your model so hard. All right, so I'm going to raise a little of this color on top. I'm going to pull some of that light value in. And then I'm going to take some of this yellow. And I'm just going to glaze a little over top of the light just to restore some of that color. We were talking earlier about yellow being kind of a weak pigment when you mix too much white into it, right? White being in the sun ray and the sunny skin tone it can uh, desaturate like very fast. So by over highlighting and then just glazing some color back on top, I can, I can bring some of that really warm yellow back in.
like such. Right? Now, if I need to, I can go back and add just some small final lights. there. Now we can go back and work on the face a little bit because now that the beard, the, the beard is very integral to the face on this figure. Um, so I like to have both, right? Kind of paint both at the same time. I can start to go back in and pick out some colors that add some uh, some color variation to the skin. This will help add some some depth and interest to the skin. Where right now it's a little. It's a little boring. So I've got this jade green, right? This was part of my plan to use in my color palette, right? This orange, this orange teal kind of color. Um, this is going to help desaturate some of these tones. And you see how it turns kind of gray? And I can use this to create some interest in parts. By adding some, uh, some more grayish tones to, to his skin and area. And so help contrast these these really warm kind of tones and then like on the upper eyelids and on the inside of here a little back here Just trying to create some nuances, right? But it's still going to read as a skin tone.
everyone, right? People who just showed up. Zambies and Joe, I guess. Joe showed up, right? Okay, so right, use use some of the the color to create variation. It's it's more about the value than it is the exact color. I can slap some of this green right in here. And as long as I don't go overboard with it, your brain will be like, yeah, sure, that makes sense there. Here, let's take some of this, take some of the hair tone, mix it with some of the skin tone. So like this color here, I'm going to give, I'll zoom in, I'll try and zoom in for this right here. It's kind of hard to see. Hold on. Switch brushes also. It'll help if I darken this just a touch. So we'll get a little more of that red on his nose. Okay. And grab some of that that hair color I don't want it as bright as the hair so I'll use kind of medium the mid-tone I just gotta paint a little little bounce light his beard onto his nose. To help reinforce that rounded shape.
Okay, then I'll just grab a little bit of this. Soften out that, that transition a little. Now, come back to the skin tone a little. I'm going to reinforce some of these highlights. Trying to be very particular where I'm placing some of these don't want these everywhere like i i said very early in the process when doing these final highlights it's important that you use them kind of sparingly or else you can make them uh make him feel like very pale very fast Okay, so now you can see, okay, so we've got some of this nice warm red in the nose, right? And around the eyes, so this reddish shadow. Here, I think this eye could actually be a little more red. And then you've got these, like, more grayish tones around the temple, and then, like, in the crux of the nose, using that green that we're going to reuse elsewhere on the figure. It's going to be a major color component for the, the rest of the figure, but we use it to desaturate to a gray because it's complementary color to the, the kind of orangish yellows, or the more orange than, than yellow, but... All right. This gray here, I'm not really a fan of. I want that to be a little more red. So we grab some of the pink and the red. Soften that transition where the hair is growing. And just glaze a little more of that, that reddish color around the eyes.
It's subtle. It's subtly red, okay? Didn't want to do the cartoonishly red nose. But we'll grab some, no, not that. Here's the magenta. Cause we gotta do the lips. And just need a tiny bit, not a lot. All right, so here with the magenta, I'm thinning it like way out. You can see on my finger how like subtle that is, right? There's like almost no color there. But you can see when I put it on the figure. That it's enough to shift the color just a little bit. Super subtle. It is so easy to go way overboard with that effect. You don't want him to look like Rudolph. Hey man, you said it, not me. I love your dwarfs. Okay. Now the mouth, the mouth. Okay. Some pink, tiny bit, tiny bit of the magenta. Just a little. It's a very powerful color. If we use too much, it'll shift the tone. Make him look like he's got lipstick on. He's just trying to adjust the mid-tone here. All right, so get some of that pink. Thanks, man. And then some of the, then I'm just going to add the sunny skin tone to that. And I'm painting little tiny dots to create the, the lip striations. And 
and then a bit of that sun ray mixed in to create the couple small tiny dots of, of light. Okay. Ah, Ta-da! Now, one thing that is bothering me is that his hair is kind of growing like into his seemingly nothingness around his mouth, which is, which is kind of weird. Um, normally you have like some skin showing like right here. So I'm going to put just a touch of skin tone around the corners of his mouth. Oh no, let me get on camera. There we go. Right, something like that. And then right under his lip, this will help define the shape of his lip. And then I can do the reverse of what I did with the hair and paint little lines coming off of the corners to blend into the hair. Create that, that sort of mouth shape that he has. Now I need to get up underneath there. It's kind of hard to see depending on what angle you're painting it at. But I need to get a little something back up in in there. Okay. Just like that. I can even grab some of this more shadow, neutral shadow color and lean into those shadows a little bit, help define the shape of that mustache some. Almost like a little cast shadow from his mustache, his moustache. I'll zoom out. Ta -da. Need to paint his, his eyebrows and uh, his eyes, but I think I'm going to take a quick break. Not bad for a little over or a little under three hours. Okay. Good night, Ollie. Hey, Ollie, you can mark me down as sending my secret Santa. It officially went out in the mail today. Let's see. What do we want to do now? Oh, let's let's paint the eyes. I need my glasses for this. All right. Let's talk about... Grab a drink first. Okay, let's talk about mixing the tonal gray, right? We already did a little bit with the green, but we've got two comp kind of complementary colors. We can grab a little of this orange. You can see when I mix some of the orange, it starts to desaturate it a little bit. Oh, that was, you just timed it perfectly, right? So I can 
mix a little of this pink. This has red in it. You can see it starts to gray out, right, in the palette. So using my complementary color palette, I can mix a neutral gray. It's more and more grayish tone. Now I need just a little more green. And then I show you on my finger, right? So it's just slightly warm gray. If I grab a little bit of this, it's got a little bit of blue in it. Create a very neutral gray tone. Gray. And base coat the eyes with a, a light gray, right? Not white. The whites of the eyes are not white. Now this one's more squinty. Okay, just like that. Got to go back and paint the lower eyelid, but it's all right. And I'm going to grab some of this magenta, mix a little of that in there to warm up this uh, gray just a touch. And then I want to paint that towards the bottom of the, the eye. It's okay if I go over the eyelid a little bit because I'm going to repaint that afterwards. Right. Okay, a bit more magenta. Cool. Now, take that neutral gray that I've mixed up, add a little bit of the, add some sun ray to it. Now I've got like a light, slightly greenish gray. See? Basically mixed like a, a khaki tone. I want to paint on the inside of the eye that to give some roundedness to it I'm gonna have to clean up again this one's a little bit more like I said squinty so it's gonna be more in shadow There we go. It's eyeball. Now with the signature series tenebrous teal.
hit the eyeball. Now that eye is quite squinty, so it's going to take up most of the eye. Only just a little bit of white showing on each side. Honestly, both eyes are pretty small, so there's only going to be a, a touch of white on, on the side of the eyes, right? Okay. And with the, the green... And make sure this is nice and thin so I can just oh they see that was way too watery. It's alright while well, it's still wet. I'm just gonna grab it and wipe that off. Come out. There we go. So, you mess it up sometimes. That's all right. Just put the, the whites back in. I'm going to repaint the lower eyelid anyways. So. Okay. No, this is just something it's very close it's like a jade green very similar green though all right try this again i'm gonna remove a lot of it from there we go that's more what i want i can control Making a mess here. Okay, a little bit better touches of that light green in the the eye. Then mix some of the yellow in with it. The sun ray. Like I said, mostly white. And I'm trying to paint a little U shape on the bottom of the eye. Like that. That U. Now go back to the teal, the tenebrous teal, which is almost black. Move that. Hi, Dave. There you go. Put the dot in the center of the eye.
then with the white yellow once that's dry put the little the little glint That one's a little big. So just go back with the, the green and shrink it. And then here. There we go. Perfecto. All right. Now, with the red and the magenta. Being very careful to line around the bottom of the eyelid, the bottom eyelid. some more of that red in there that's okay we'll want that because I'm gonna highlight it back up and then it won't appear so red Edge highlight the island. in here and put some little shadows in the 
corner of the eyelids. Give them kind of tired eyes. Little highlights on the eyelid. It's going to help it look kind of kind of wet. And this one, this is extremely small. Like you guys, uh, probably don't need to go to this extent because it's difficult to see. But I'm going to clean up that line just a little bit. Try and thin it, thin it out just a touch. help define some of these little folds. Cool. And my highlight color. Okay. That little bit of light in his eye there helped to find the shape of that lower eyelid. Cool. Now, get fancy with this. I have to be very careful here, but I can take some of this pink, pinkish tone with some of the yellow mixed in. I want it pretty close to the highlight color, not all quite all the way. I grab just a touch of the magenta. I need this very small dot. And get into the corner here where the tear duct is. And I have to clean some stuff up around the nose because this is hard to reach, but that's okay. Put a little dot in the corner of the eye. Right there. Am I in, are you calling me insane? <laughs> okay. Cool.
Now I got a little blue earlier on the beard when I was wiping paint, so just need to have the green clean that up just a little, just a touch. Go over top of that to fix that. Don't want that. Some green is okay. Like honestly, I could I could take some of this green, nice and thinned out, and like even add like a little right here and maybe right here, around the shadows a little bit, just to add some interest. You can see it doesn't really turn green on top of the red when you glaze it. it turns kind of grayish in the corners away from the light. All right, let's add a couple few last little highlights to pick out. Just to help define some spots here in the corner of the eyes where he, he's got a lot of little wrinkles and stuff. Like one kind of back in there. Right. How's he look? Need to paint his eyebrows. My palette's kind of drying out. Round some of those parts of his face just a little more. And here where the beard connects, I want some small little brush strokes just to indicate hairs kind of higher up on his cheek. Uh, 
that'll help blend those two together. These are like really subtle little touches that'll that'll help a lot. Makes it feel more more natural. Now the eyebrows are quite heavily sculpted compared to the rest of the figure. I don't want them to be like super uh, shaped like compared to the way Lucas normally sculpts hair. They are, they are pretty heavily textured. So I'm, I'm going to actually go against the sculpt a little here and not define them as much as they are in the sculpt and let the, the sculpt work kind of do its thing. compared to the beard, how smooth the beard is. Just takes a, a few touches to lighten this up. Something like that. Then I'm gonna thanks for me. There. And just place a little dots in a couple spots just to give some. I like to the, the eyebrows. And there we go. Um, okay, last little thing I want to do, I'm going to take some pure of the these two and just mix them together. This is going to give me like a really dark brown shadow tone. And I'm going to come in. I'm really going to like deepen the shadow between the uh, the eyebrow and the upper eyelid. You shouldn't ever really even see it, but in case someone wants to look at the figure upside down. Like a weirdo. I've painted the shadows in under his eye.
So looking at it now, I'm not a big fan of the, the cast shadow from the helmet is not quite defined enough. So I'm going to just pull some of this color in towards the side of his head here like this. It's going to be a very small shadow. If I, if I want one, it's got to be quite dark. So like, something like this. I mean that you you can be partial to dwarves. Dwarves are cool. I'm admittedly partial to work, so All right. Great. Dwarf face. Apparently every figure that has a beard is me. The last five figures I've painted are all self-portraits, I guess. Um, let's see. One other little touch, just trying to analyze, take a look here. I want the mustache here to just have a few brush strokes here, just to flow the mustache into the beard a little bit. Have these two parts kind of merge together. I think that's about it. Fix some, I often miss some parts on the side. I'm not, I'm not looking at those, those angles very closely, so. Cool, any questions? Anybody got any uh, thoughts, comments, questions?
Sweet. Well then, I guess uh, we'll continue on him next week. I'll probably paint the hands. I'll show you guys how how uh, to do like veins and stuff. Or veins. I can't get them to pop out like this. I gotta have them higher up. Squeeze. Or 